morning. Welcome to the Ventura Center for Spiritual Living. I'm Reverend Bonnie Rose, and it is a delight to have you with us today. I'm going to turn it over to Lonnie. Welcome. So I'm so glad that we are joining together this morning, and I'm just really happy because I know what day of the week it is. And <laughs> it's a celebration Sunday, so I know we're in for a treat with our special guest and our beautiful music and just you joining us. So welcome and sit back and enjoy. Thank you. Um, before we uh, do our children's message, I'm just going to um, invite you to look over there and see if you can discern who is the real Kusala. <laughs> Will the real Kusala please stand up? <laughs> Yay! <laughs> and you are welcome to come and find a comfy seat and not sit next to your twin there. <laughs> okay. Now, Mrs. Hadris. <laughs> Jennifer Gadbury Hedris is our practitioner today. She's going to come up and give us our invocation. I invite everybody at home, if you're a practitioner or administrator, to go ahead and stand up or at least do what you need to do to center into this practitioner consciousness. And everybody else, take this moment. Just relax into this moment, knowing that there is one life, one God, one infinite source of intelligence with us always, right here in this moment. There is no place that God is not. And as I know that truth and feel that truth deep in my heart, I know that God is in me as me every waking moment, every sleeping moment, every moment. And I know that truth for everyone hearing this word right now. Right now on Sunday morning, right now, Monday night, whenever you're listening to this word, God is unifying us in this beautiful cyberspace I know that we come together with hearts open, minds open, receiving this blessing, the blessing of the message, the blessing of the music, the blessing of this community, this community that is God's love that goes out beyond these walls always, not just in times of pandemic, but always, that we are unified in that and it's beautiful and blessed. I know today is perfect, just like every other day. Every day is a miracle, and we are open to that blessing. And I'm grateful to know that truth, grateful to know this truth of oneness, this truth of love, this truth of peace, this truth of God, and to know this blessing. And I release this word into universal law, and together we say, and so and it is. So it is. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. And so we take just a moment to breathe into that spaciousness that Jennifer created or recreated with her wise and wonderful words. We stay there for just a moment, feeling us, feeling it touch us from the inside out, expand our hearts. And then we breathe in deeply and exhale, opening our eyes in love and in service to what is, as it is, and so it is. Every 
So I just wanted, um, let's give Karen Mitchell a round of applause at home. Yay! <laughs> okay, one of our, our beautiful singers who couldn't be here today. Um, but she's fine and her family's fine. She's just needing to go into quarantine because there's people in her, in her life that are working. So that's the way that goes. Um, I wanted to just take a moment to introduce our guest speaker, who he's, he's not up there anymore. Um, that's not the real Kusala. The real one is going to come up on the stage and enlighten us about karma, I believe, right? Okay, so let's, let's um, give an at-home round of applause for Kusala. <laughs> Thank you, my pleasure. Okay, I'm happy to be here today. We have a large audience of five people, <laughs> which is the way it's supposed to be. I'm gonna talk about karma today, because karma is something we can do something about. We're not victims, it's not fate. We have a choice. Now, what is karma? Karma is everything we think, everything we say, everything we do. That falls under the classification of karma. The results of what we think, say, and do, that's called a vipaka in Pali, the canonical language of early Buddhism. So we have karma, vipaka, cause, and consequence. Now, we are always one of the contributing factors of everything that happens to us, but only one. There are 9,999 other reasons why stuff happens. But we have a say in the matter. We can make a difference. But we have to have the right mindset. We need to look at life as practice. I'm going to practice having a good life, a skillful life, a wholesome life, a happy life. I'm going to practice every day because if I practice long enough, practice turns into performance. 
And that's what we want. We want it to simply happen because we have done it so many times before. Now it just occurs naturally. So I'm going to talk about five ways to change your karma starting today. Number one, the first way to change your karma is not to kill anything. Now, I know most of us don't intend to go out in the day or the night and kill stuff, but we do. It's just what humans do. I love a triple A ad that I saw on TV about this one guy who says, I saved enough money through triple A, I can do what I really like to do. In the next scene, he's on his boat fishing. Now, what he really likes to do is kill fish. And we have all sorts of euphemisms for that. But really, the, the deal is I'm going to just kill some fish. I might eat them. I might throw them back after I rip the hook out of their mouth. But as I became more advanced in my practice of not killing, I saw that maybe, maybe it's OK not to go fishing. Because I can go to the store and get some fish fillet. I can go to McDonald's. I, I don't have to kill. I am contributing to the death of those fish, but that death allows me to live another day so I can continue my practice. The way the world is set up, it's really weird. I've given a lot of thought over the past three months. It is so weird that we have to eat things that were at one time alive in order for us to sustain our life until we come up with a chemical combination that will sustain our life, we have to eat living things. But we don't necessarily have to kill them personally. We can say a prayer to them. We can recognize the fact that they've given their life so I can continue my life. And once we get this not killing thing out of the way, then the idea is to support life. How can I support life? You can start today, the next time you find a spider in your house. Don't kill the little guy. Find a closet for him, or maybe a shed in the back, or a plant to crawl in. But most of them are fairly easy to catch, and you can continue your practice by allowing them to live. Cockroaches, I know, but we can continue our practice by allowing them to live as well, maybe not with us, maybe not around us, but still, do we need to kill them? Mosquitoes, I have come to the conclusion we may need to kill them. <laughs> but, they, but they carry a lot of terrible diseases, and you know, uh, I'm not sure why they're here. I can look at most of life and go, yeah, they, they contribute to something, but I haven't figured out what the mosquito contributes to other than our personal demise. First, we prevent killing. Second, we support life. That's how we can start changing our karma today. Number two, the second way we can continue practicing having better karma is not to steal stuff. Now, I know most of us don't have to, but some people just like to steal. It gives them a thrill to have somebody else's merchandise and, and, and not pay for it. You know, and I'm going, well, okay, when I was like nine, that might have been a thrill. But, you know, these days, everybody is so concerned about their stuff because it's getting harder and harder to have more stuff the businesses are closed, the money's getting tight. So what little stuff you now have becomes even more important to you. If you take somebody's stuff, you are causing them great suffering because they think that they own that stuff. They have a receipt. That makes it theirs. So being conscious of what people think they own and how attached they are to it allows us to see that by taking it, by not asking to take it, by it not being given to us, we're causing suffering. 
Now, the other side of taking is giving. How can we give in a way that we can afford to give on a consistent basis? I have a woman on Facebook. Every month, she sends two cases of cat food to the meditation center where I live. Now, those cats don't know how lucky they are. They are blessed because they live in a meditation center, and they are fed twice a day, and they have dry food all day and all night. That is often shared by the raccoons and the possums. So we're giving all the time. I also just bought a bird feeder for one of the trees in the backyard of the Zendo. It's a small bird feeder. I didn't think that many birds would come and eat, but I probably have 50 or 100 little sparrows every day. I'm filling it two and three times a day. I'm going through 20, 30, 40 pounds of bird food a week. How do they know it's there? I didn't think they could communicate with each other, but apparently they can, and they always talk about food. So Vons, of all places, has bird food. And right next to the bird food is the squirrel food. And we have two squirrels now. So I bought a 10-pound bag of squirrel food. So we got the squirrels, we got the birds, we got the fish, we got the cats. I'm working hard. I'm practicing giving every day, sometimes twice, three times a day. But you know what? It feels good. It feels good to support the life of all these little critters. And one day, on my second floor room in the Zendo, a little squirrel made its way outside my window and waved its tail. And I thought to myself, it's thanking me. It knows where the little squirrel food is coming from. And, and how cool is that? Now, granted, after three months in seclusion, I'm a little deluded. But when I saw the squirrel waving its tail, I knew it was for me. Number three, let's not practice sexual misconduct. You know, as I was young, a long time ago, I sort of didn't know what sexual misconduct was. It was sort of like genes and hormones and, and energy and all sorts of stuff. And women and girls and every, all those females were so beautiful. When you're 15, 16, 17, every female is just glorious. And you just want to be with them. Now, I didn't know the idea was to have children. You know, that was sort of out of my understanding at the time. It was just to be around them, to smell them, to see how beautiful their hair was, to be part of their world. Well, the years went on. And as I gained a little more insight into the nature of relationship, I came to understand that this is nature's way of replicating. Nature is forcing us in every moment of every day to seek out a partner or a mate that will live with you and bear your children. And you'll have two, three, four, five children, and you'll be so happy and so tired and so broke. But it'll be a wonderful thing because the world always needs more people. And now we're at about seven billion, maybe a little bit more. We're going, wow, you know, now it's really important to have children because we have a pandemic. So we're losing a lot of people. We gotta, we gotta replace them. Well, I'm not sure it's balanced yet. I'm not sure enough people are dying and enough people being born to create zero yet. We are still creating a whole lot of people and it's wonderful. A few of us have chosen not to. A few of us have chosen to have cats and birds and fish, and chipmunks, and all sorts of other living creatures. And that's where that sort of fatherly, supportive mind state is happening for me. Those are my kids out there. I get up every morning just getting ready to clean some bowls and pour some food and change the water. What a nice way to start your day. And I can appreciate what parents go through 
in starting their day by feeding their children. You know, it's just so satisfying to see somebody that's satisfied. So sexual misconduct is really something that we need to look at clearly and understand there are certain things we really don't need to do. Now, one of the things we don't need to do is have sex with people who are married. You know, it's so hard to stay married. I see it all the time. My folks were divorced. I was 11. You know, my mom got married again later in life. But it's so hard to stay married and in relationship and trusting the partner that you're living with. So we don't want to ruin that. We don't want to make them second guess their relationship. So it's best not to have sex with people that are married. And then it's good not to have sex with people who are engaged because they're trying to have a relationship. They're getting ready for a lifelong commitment. And we don't want them to second guess. That is this going to be good for me? Will this be good for her? We don't want them to go there. So maybe it's best that we don't have sex with people who are engaged. Maybe it's a good thing that we don't have sex with children who are being supported by their parents. Because the parents are raising their children. They're giving them life lessons every day. They don't need to have sex. They'll have sex for the rest of their life. And in the beginning of our life, it's nice to be innocent. It just feels really good. I can remember I was in sixth or seventh grade, and it was in Phoenix, Arizona, and we had a dirt road that we would walk to school. And I was walking down the dirt road, and I saw this page lying in the dirt. And it was a page from Playboy. And it had a naked woman on the page. So I put it in my pocket. When I got home from school that day, I said, Mom, I found this on the dirt road. What is it? Why is there a naked woman on there? And she gave me a short explanation and then took the page and tore it up. And I thought to myself, maybe I don't need to know why. Maybe it's okay to be ignorant about that now. Because I'm just in grade school. I got a lot of stuff to do. I got football. I got tetherball. I got a class that needs me to pay attention to. So when I saw that and thought back, I thought, yeah, parents are really good at sort of protecting their children. Because they know once they go out into the world, everything will be available to them, and they're going to have some hard choices to make. So it's nice they didn't have to make those choices in sixth or seventh grade. <coughs> How about lying, telling untruths? How about people who bend the truth to their advantage? It's called spinning, I guess. What do we do about that? How are we going to practice telling the truth and not lying or not gossiping or not getting involved in idle chatter? How can we do that? What does it mean to us? to always tell the truth. Well, I have come to the conclusion that if you always want to tell the truth, sometimes you don't say anything. Because there's, there's no truth that is worth expressing that creates more and more suffering. Fashion is one of those truths. People have fashion for a lot of reasons. And I may not understand or like the fashion that's being presented, but do I need to say anything? Does my opinion count according to fashion? I mean, look at the way I dress. Yeah. So sometimes I see things that just blow my mind fashion-wise, and I just nothing to say. I got nothing good to say because it's going to create more suffering rather than less. So. As I think about what I'm going to say, I want to be as truthful as I can, but I don't want to hurt anybody. I want to point out that we all have choices and options to make in everything we do, and speech is definitely one of them. Speech happens so quickly. I have said things that I feel uncomfortable with, and it's lasted my whole life. I said to myself, why did I say that? What was I thinking in that moment, in those circumstances, with that person or people, I felt I needed to share something from a deep and personal level. 
but it was completely out of context and had nothing to do with anything that was going on other than what was happening in my head, and nobody knows that, not even me. So maybe I didn't need to say it, and I still carry the burden of having said it all those years later. Wow. Now, if we are going to talk, how about talking in a way that supports, encourages, makes life a little better, shows that things aren't as bad as they always seem, or as good as they always seem. There's a wonderful balance. It's called the middle path. Buddhism talks about it a lot. Can we do that? Can we express ourselves in that way? Can we have an intelligent, compassionate conversation that will inspire everybody at the end? And we can, but it takes a lot of work, and it takes a lot of pre-thought sometimes, and it takes a lot of practice. So when we are faced with what to say and how to say it, sometimes how we say it is more important than what we say. It can be misinterpreted. It can be used against us or against other people. And I'm just thinking to myself, when people ask me about politics, how do you feel, Kusla? I have no idea how I feel. Talk to me about suffering. I'll talk to you about that. I have a lot to say about that. Politics, nah, I don't know. I don't know. Never really ended suffering very long. Okay. How about religion? There are a lot of really good religions out there that people talk about, and people feel better because of it. That is so cool. This sort of higher consciousness, the higher path, makes a difference in people's lives, and they feel better because of it. Now, the last way we can change our karma for the better is to stay sober. Man, how hard is that now? Alcohol sales are going through the roof. They're even delivering. You know, because people aren't doing anything. They're just watching TV, maybe reading a book, sitting in the backyard. What's better than a cold beer and a hot day? And maybe some salsa and some chips. You just can't get any better in life than that. Well, the problem with drinking or other substances is that it steals your wisdom. You become really dumb. You say and do things you wish you hadn't, that you regret, only because you were stimulated by the alcohol or the other substances. And you say, well, that's not really me. But in that moment, that was really you, because you were more deluded than you normally are. Okay, so how can we not get high? Well, I would encourage everybody to eat chocolate. <laughs> Dark chocolate, preferably. That's one way to sort of get high and, you know, and it's not too bad, you know? So th there are ways around not consuming intoxicants. And there are ways, if you are going to consume intoxicants, not to become intoxicated. Don't get drunk. Just be drinking. Okay, glass of wine. You know, the French say it's good for you. Beer, Germans say it's great for you. Coca-Cola, Americans say it's wonderful for you. But if we are moderate, if we follow the middle path, it's fine. It's fine. When we cross that line to intoxication, we've got issues. And we have a lot of issues when it comes to driving. I've been watching live PD on YouTube. And they pull over people for a, a tail light that's out. Can I see your driver's license, sir? I don't have one. Why are you driving? I'm not driving, I'm just traveling, one guy said. Okay. Do you have insurance? No, I don't have insurance. I don't need insurance. I'm just traveling. Okay. Anything in the car you want to tell us about? No, it's not my car. <laughs> and then they bring the dog. And the dog hits on the car. And they search the car. And he's got 12 pounds of marijuana, methamphetamine, coke. I don't know why it's there. Okay. You can see, even if you don't take drugs, but you have drugs with you, it's going to ruin your life. 
It really is. And life's hard enough right now. It is so hard just to have a day, let alone a good day. You wake up in the morning and say, what am I going to do today? The same thing I did yesterday. Nothing. Okay. Well, are you getting good at doing nothing? It takes a lot of practice to do nothing well. It doesn't happen because you're just doing nothing. You have to do nothing in a skillful way. And you can. I figured it out. You know, I feed cats. I'm not doing, I'm doing something, but it really turns out to be nothing. Very few people are impressed with it. What did you do today? I fed cats. That's what you did today? With all the other things you could have done? Well, that seemed like the best thing to do. It made a difference in the world. We have less hungry cats now. Well, you know, and then you post a picture and they go, why are you posting pictures of cats on your Facebook page? Because people like cats. Okay. Could you have done something different, posted other things? I could have. But at that moment, it made perfect sense to have a cat picture. And a clever quote. And people might smile and feel just a little bit better for that moment that they're looking at the cat picture with the cute quote. Okay, so you're still not doing much. And most, most people would say you're not really doing anything at all. But you know what? They don't see what you see. They don't understand how you're connected to the world in your own very special way. And that everything you do has a ripple effect through the entire universe. That cat picture is felt around the world, even if you're not on Facebook. Because you did something. You did nothing, but you did something. So as I look at my life now, as I try to practice these five ways of changing my karma, as I look at my Facebook page, and now my Instagram page, and then I have my podcast, and I have my website, I got a lot to do. And I don't have to look good to do it. That's the best part. You know, and I can have snacks while I'm doing it. It's even better. So we need to find our way in these interesting and challenging times. We need to do nothing in a skillful way. We need to do nothing that makes a difference. Or we need to do something that makes a difference that looks like nothing. Because everything we do, everything we think, everything we say makes a difference. I'm going to stop there. It feels like a good place to stop. And all the people that are here, the five of you that are here, and the hundreds or tens of thousands that are watching us right now, thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining me. It was so much fun to have something to do today. Have a great one. Thank you, Priscilla. That was wonderful. <laughs> so I got a lot out of that, but the main message I got was I can eat chocolate now. So <laughs> I'll see you. <laughs> All right, let's pray. So let's turn within. Let's turn within and just breathe and know and trust that there truly is this one perfect life. This life that is both everything and nothing simultaneously. This life that is the love that encompasses all opposites. And this life is my life right now. It is our life, our shared journey here on this planet Earth, this experience that we call Earth. Our home, our friend, our mother. And so we breathe into this divine connection that has never been separate. We breathe into the knowing that we are that one life, that we are that power and that presence and that love, that we are that which is both nothing and everything. We are that which embraces opposites. And as we know this for ourselves, we know this for every single aspect of our lives. We know that any appearance of illness, karma, 
or disturbance or conflict, all of this is surrounded by something greater than the appearance itself. And we rise above our limited human perspective and move into the human melding into the divine so that we can see clearly. So that we can see clearly that everything is nothing and nothing is everything. And then we choose. We choose to make the right and noble choice. We choose to do that which blesses our own lives, that which is skillful and constructive. And we choose also in the same choice to do that which blesses the world. We choose to look past the appearance of small and know that in the universe everything is great and everything is small at the same time. That the small is meaningful. That the small has power and ripples and divine consequences. And so in this consciousness we go forth to our day, to our lives, to our world, and we celebrate, and we live, and we love with great grace and gratefulness of heart. I am so grateful to know this truth. I'm so grateful to have the words to speak it and to know that the truth is beyond any words. I'm so grateful for the transformation that I know is taking place in all of us watching today. All of us watching our lives and the future and the present and the past. I'm so grateful for this teaching, for all teachings, all paths to God. I bless all of them, churches, synagogues, mosques, ashrams, fundamentalists, atheists, agnostics, all paths. And with a heart that is so filled with the blessing of spirit, of love, of joy, of peace, that always abides in everything. I say thank you, spirit, thank you, love, and I release these words into the divine mystery. And together we say, and so it is. Now we're gonna have another song for, for all of us. Well, for some of us, not the people here, but <laughs> for most of us, uh, we're gonna uh, have Karen Mitchell sing us a second song. So let's go ahead and do that. about my life It may be a strange surprise to some I have always thought I wanted what so many want But it's to a different conclusion I've come I see water rushing through an ancient riverbed I see snowfall floating high above the hill I see an eagle soaring to the red horizon And I know that's how I am meant to live Oh, I need to be I know that humankind 
is my family and this entire precious planet is our home while some others build their walls and boundaries we will float above them all hell will never be It's a calling, it's a vision, it's a voice, and I must listen. So today, this very day, I'm stepping in. Oh, I need to be free. Thank you. Let's have another round of applause for Karen. Yay! We love you, Karen. I'm hoping Karen's watching today. Just love, love you so much. Thank you. Okay, so a um, couple of announcements before we go our separate ways. Um, now, all of this information is in great detail on our website, www.venturacsl.org. First thing I want to tell you about is a new class that's coming up. It's uh, facilitated by Kim Bryson, who's a wonderful, wonderful teacher. It's called The Power and Magic of Behavioral Lifestyles. And it's uh, tomorrow. It's tomorrow at uh, 6.30. And you can find information about that on our website. It's priceless pricing. And you can uh, go ahead and pre-register and get the uh, Zoom information, OK? There's another class coming up on Zoom. This is a new class that we've never taught here, but it's very similar to Five Gifts for an Abundant Life that we taught successfully for years. Wonderful class about prosperity. And this class is called Keys to the Kingdom. It's facilitated by another one of our wonderful teachers and practitioners, who is Linda Drevenstedt. And that is uh, seven Tuesdays, and you have to pre-register for that as well. There's a, a small materials fee. And uh, just look on our website under classes, and that'll show you where to sign up. If you're going to register for that one, go ahead and jump in and do it, because we need to order the books and make sure that we have enough for everybody, OK? Thanks. OK, Wednesday's meditation this week is kindness meditation. And the Zoom information will be posted on the meditation page in our, on our website. Uh, let's see. So the flowers today are donated in honor of Norm Fort in celebration of his birthday with deepest gratitude for everything that he does for us. Let's give Norm a round of applause. <laughs> Those are the, the flowers. And you, you may notice if you're watching at home, there's, a, there's a Norm up there. Um, Norm sanitizes our sanctuary for us. And that's Norm with our little um, Ghostbusters sanitation device there. <laughs> Looks like he's uh, sanitizing the young, the young Buddha. Is that right? OK. I don't know that he needs it, but anyway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so there you go. All right, one more thing. Um, if you would like prayer with a practitioner after the service, we have a, um, a public service announcement by Doreen Palermo and the practitioners waving. And uh, the Zoom information will be posted on our Facebook page. I'll just tell you that there's going to be great prayers, private prayers with the practitioner on Zoom after this uh, service. And if you have any cares or worries or even something to celebrate, Go to, our, go to the, the page. It's also on our web page under Sunday services. 
log into the Zoom contact information, and you are good to go. You will get private prayer with one of our beautiful practitioners. That being said, let us pray now. <laughs> All right. So I turn within and trust to know the power and the presence, the life that is God that has led us here to this sacred moment where we have celebrated together at a distance and how wonderful and how beautiful that paradox is because as we celebrate at a distance, these ripples from the center go farther and wider and deeper. And so I'm just so grateful, grateful for this time together, grateful for all of the wisdom that was shared, grateful for all of the behind the scenes.